everybody can see my screen. Screen yes, saya boleh nampak eh? Boleh. Okay. Boleh, Doktor. Okay, thank you. So, uh, last week, uh, uh, we we don't have class last week, but I already uh, share the lecture video last week. And my lecture video is up to this slide. Okay, about uh, bandwidth improvement factor. Okay, so uh, maybe I can uh, refresh again what what I have uh, shown you last week. Okay, in the in the video. Okay. So if we uh, <coughs> If we draw the picture, okay, maybe I can draw the picture. Uh, hopefully, this time my screen will not freeze, eh? uh, because I already have a new stylus, new stylus pen. So hopefully, there's no problem for today, inshallah. So, okay, so maybe we can start. <coughs> so where are we now, actually? Okay, so maybe I will redraw this one. Okay. So previously we have learned uh, about the transmitter. Okay, and we have learned about the modulator. Uh, about the modulator. So inside this uh, transmitter, we have what we call as a modulator. Okay, modulator. So the job of modulator is to do the process of modulations. Okay, so in the modulator side, we have the input VMT and also we have the VCT. Okay, and we produce the VAMT. Okay. And we have learned about uh, a few types of AM. Okay, so we have a uh, double sideband full carrier. Okay, so this one we have we have learned about double sideband full carrier. Uh, we have learned about uh, double sideband uh, suppressed carrier. Uh, we also have learned about a uh, single sideband. Okay, either with a uh, carrier or without carrier. Okay. Uh, here we have uh, learned in order to generate a double sideband full carrier, we can use uh, the diode modulator. Okay. Okay. And uh, we can also have a transistor modulator. So this is for the low level modulator and for the high level modulator we have what we call a series modulator uh, uh, we also have a high level modulator so okay high level modulator in your slides we have two types of high level modulator uh, if i'm not mistaken series modulator and also collector modulator if i'm not mistaken and uh, this is for the double sideband uh, sorry this is for the double sideband full carrier generations and for the double sideband suppressed carrier generation we have learned about balance modulator okay and then uh, single sideband also we have learned about uh, using a uh, balance modulator also but this one is uh, we have a phasing meth uh, we have a, a filter method and also the phasing method okay so uh, both of these still using the uh, balance modulator also okay first we we generate the double sideband suppressed carrier and then we filter out the unwanted sidebands okay so in the previous semesters uh, 
uh, a few times we have asked question about uh, phasing method in the previous semester so if you see the fun previous final exam uh, there's uh, there's a questions about a uh, single sideband uh, generate uh, uh, generating process using the phasing method where the student was asked to uh, to to define the equations uh, at a few points in the uh, in the modulator okay macam uh, pelajar ditanya berkenaan dengan uh, persamaan uh, apa uh, persamaan gelombang yang terhasil pada setiap bahagian output daripada modulator tersebut okay so i have explained about this uh, in the lecture video Okay, I also have explained about this in the lecture video. So, uh, again, uh, if we, uh, okay, again, uh, first of all, you need to, when you want to draw the, uh, the waveform or the power spectrum, first of all, you need to find the, uh, the equations, okay? You need to find the equations. Okay, from here, then you can uh, draw the uh, the spectrum. Okay, for example, here uh, A, B, C, for example. Okay, so if there's a three components over here, that means the spectrum also contains three components. And then from here, you can do the rest. You can do, for example, power calculations. Okay. Okay, so from here you can do the uh, any kind of calculations. Okay, and <coughs> and for your information, uh, modulator uh, within the transmitter modulator normally situated at the end of the transmitter. So if you have a big, uh, biggest, uh, bigger picture of the trans, uh, uh, trans transmitter, okay. So within the transmitter, there are uh, a few processes, okay, a few processes, and normally, usually, uh, the modulator are at the end of the, uh, at the end, uh, the end process of the. Um, uh, in the transmission process okay in the the end pro the end transmission sorry modulator normally situated at the end of the transmitter before we transmit the signal to the receiver okay okay selalunya dia berada di di bahagian hujung eh nanti saya akan tunjukkan perbezaan pada receiver okay so there are a few processes happens okay so this is a transmitter so within the transmitter, there are many many process happens. Okay, what you learn here is only uh, some of the processes happens in the transmitter. Okay. So uh, we have complete about this. Okay, we have seen about this. So now we want to see what happened in the receiver. Okay, what happened in the receiver. So in the receiver, okay. Uh, so receiver is quite a complex uh, uh, process compared to the transmitter, okay. Because we want to retrieve uh, the original signal VMT, okay. So here we we have VMT is an input message, okay. And then here we have another input for the carrier, okay. And we transmit VAMT. And we receive a VAMT, okay, and we want to produce the original VMT, okay. So in the in the in the receiver, uh, there are a few blocks, eh? okay. This is what we call as uh, uh, RF sections, okay. Here we have the RF section. Here we have a uh, uh, mix.
mixer converter section Sorry. Uh, I will explain about this later okay mixer uh, converter section okay and then we have uh, IF section intermediate frequency section and here we have a uh, uh, detector detector section okay detector or demodulation section and at the end we produce VMT okay at the output Okay. So, uh, in the beginning of the uh, receiver part in your in your uh, in your notes, okay, dalam nota, okay, if dalam nota, uh, okay, starting from the detection section, eh. Okay, starting from here, when we mention about demodulator, this is also known as the detector. Okay, the the, the other names is a detector. So if you see in the book, some sometimes it is using the detector, sometimes it is using the demodulator. So both are the same. Okay, so what uh, what happened here in uh, in your lecture notes? Okay, so initially uh, the notes explain about detector this part okay okay am detector so at the beginning of your uh, lecture notes uh, it starts explaining about detector the demodulation process okay demodulation process so detector do the process of demodulations okay and I have explained about this uh, regarding the uh, diode demodulator, diode detector, and also we have the transistor detector. Okay, in my previous uh, last uh, last week, I have explained about diode detector, uh, how the process of uh, AM uh, demodulation process, how we can retrieve the original VMT. Okay, you can see from my lecture video last week. Also transistor detector, and then double sideband and single sideband demodulation process. Okay, so the first part explain about demodulation process, and then uh, it starts showing about uh, the whole picture of the receiver. Okay, kemudian uh, nota ini menunjukkan uh, uh, the complete picture of the receiver. Okay, so I want to show you that uh, after this. Uh, starting from here, receiver parameter, uh, the, the nodes starts explaining about uh, filter uh, parameters. Okay, so where is the location of these filters? Okay, so the location of these filters is in the RF section over here. Okay, so within the RF sections, we have uh, a few components. The first one is what we call as the pre selector. Okay, and we also have the what we call as the RF amplifier. Okay, so pre-selector is the front end of the receiver, where the job of pre-selector is to select uh, the signal that we want. Okay, the job of the pre-selector is to select uh, the the signals, the frequency bands that we want. Okay. So if you see here, uh, the antenna receive the whole frequency spectrum. Okay, but we don't want to. We, we we don't want all the frequency spectrum. We only want to listen to a specific frequency. Okay, for example, if I want to listen to a certain radio station, I need to tune to that frequency of that uh, radio stations. Okay, and that tuning process. Okay, that tuning process is done by the uh, pre-selector okay when you when you tune you are actually uh, uh, tuning uh, the, the the filter 
okay, the, the pre-selector, the filter in the pre-selector at specific frequencies. Okay, and so if you see here, we receive, uh, antenna receive all the AM band, not only AM band or any, um, many frequencies, FM band and other radio band uh, uh, frequencies. But we don't want all of this, okay? Uh, so that's the job of the free selector to, to select only a certain portions of the frequency and then later we do the process of filtering method until we do the process of demodulation and we retrieve the original VMT. Okay, and remember that uh, the AM waveform that we received um, uh, contains a low amplitude uh, signal because of the attenuations. So the signal has traveled long distance from the transmitter to the receiver. So what happens is that there are many process of attenuations happen and when the signal arrives at the receiver, the signal becomes weaker. Okay, so we need to amplify uh, we need to amplify the signal so that we can do the rest of the process. Okay. So here in the pre-selector, uh, if you see from your notes, it start explaining about a few um, filter parameters. The first one is about selectivity. Okay. If you see from the notes, uh, it starts uh, explaining about selectivity. So selectivity is the ability of the receiver to select uh, the frequency that we need and to reject the others. Okay, there's a selectivity, param uh, the meaning of the selectivity. Okay, and selectivity parameters, uh, so this is also related with the uh, filter parameter. Uh, the first one is the uh, shape factor which is defined as the bandwidth of uh, minus 60 dB divided with bandwidth of minus 3 dB. So this is related with the filter uh, this is related with the filter uh, frequency uh, what they call uh, frequency response curve of the filter. Okay, so ini berkaitan dengan frequency response curve of the filter. So this is the characteristic of the filter. So if I, maybe I can uh, redraw again. Okay, so, so the, okay, the, okay, it's not like this way. Sorry about my drawing. Okay, I, I will draw a simple uh, diagram here. Here, it's a bell shape, eh? normally bell shape like this. So if you do like this, so remember that the 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 top here is a zero dB. Okay, and then slightly over here is what we call as the minus three dB. And over here is uh, minus sixty dB. Okay, and the frequent the the resonant frequency is over here, f. So when you want to tune to the uh, desired frequency band, uh, the the uh, you need to tune at the center frequency. Okay, this is what we call as a resonant frequency. So this resonant frequency is actually related, or we can say the same, as the carrier frequency okay so the carrier frequency is actually the the center frequency uh, when we transmit the signal from transmitter to the receiver remember that the center frequency is the fc carrier and we have the double sideband and also uh, lower sideband and upper sideband okay so that means if you if i want to listen to that signal okay if i want to retrieve that signal i need to tune my receiver okay at the center frequency of the carrier. Okay, apabila saya ingin mendengar ataupun menerima signal yang dihantar daripada transmitter, saya perlu tune saya punya receiver. Okay, 
pada frekuensi pada center frekuensi signal tersebut. So apakah center frekuensi tersebut adalah carrier. Okay, and in the uh, in the notes is also shown as the resonant frequency. That means that we want the filter, we want the preselector to resonate at FC. Okay, kita ingin uh, preselector itu resonate pada uh, center frequency of the carrier. Okay, so this is FR also known as the resonant frequency. Okay, so what happened here is that uh, here I have explained in the previous video that um, ideally we want the filter to have very sharp, uh, very sharp cut off uh, frequency like this. Ideally, we want the filter to be able to select to cut the frequency band like this. Ideally. However, in the in the real world, okay, in the practical cases, the filter cannot do like this, very sharp like this. Okay, normally there's will there will be slightly skirt like this, eh? Biasanya akan ada skirt di tepi sini, eh? This is a normal uh, fil filter re frequency response. So, uh, the sharper the cut off frequency, the better would be the filter. Okay, if we can reduce this side, okay, the skirting side, okay, kalau kita boleh reduce uh, this uh, side, that means it will become better. Okay, it will become much, much better. So, it depends on the filtering technology that we used. Okay, if we have a very good filter that can have close to the ideal case, sharp like this, it will be much, much better. Okay, because we only want these frequency band we don't we don't want the rest okay so that's why the the uh, one one uh, one of the filter parameter is the shape factor which is the bandwidth of the minus 60 db okay divide with the bandwidth of the minus 3 db okay so this is no unit parameter unitless parameter so ideally we want uh, the shape factor to be as minimum as small as possible okay so if the if the uh, if the skirting part okay if the skirting part which is a minus six, 60 db is close to the minus 3 db okay ideally you will get equal to one okay ideally okay but in the non-ideal case, the value would be more than one. Okay, so that's the first parameter of the uh, uh, in the preselector for the filter. So here we have a filter. Okay, and then uh, the next parameter is what we call as the sensitivity. So sensi sensitivity is defined as the minimum RF signal, minimum amplitude of the RF signal that can be detected. Okay. Uh, by the receiver. So the word detected here means that not, o not only we can receive but we can uh, do the demodulation process successfully. Okay, kita boleh receive dan kita boleh convert kepada original signal. That's the meaning of sensitivity. Not just we can receive, eh? not just uh, to receive but receive and do the rest of the process. Okay, that's the, uh, the sensitivity parameter. So sensitivity, sensitivity parameter also relate with the uh, uh, preselector, the the filter in the preselector. So, sorry, before that I forgot to explain about this. Eh? The uh, this is a select uh, among the selectivity parameter is a quality factor. So the quality factor is defined as the uh, inductance reactance defined with the resistance of the preselector okay so q is related with the preselector or we call it as a tune circuit so this is uh, q equal to the uh, inductive reactance divided with the uh, resistance of the tune circuit 
apa itu tune circuit? Eh? Tune circuit juga adalah uh, nama lain kepada pre-selector. Okay, this is uh, another name of the pre-selector what we call as a tune circuit. Okay, and here we have uh, other than shape factor, we also have the quality factor which is uh, inductive reactance divide with the uh, resistance of the tune circuit. Okay, this is no. Uh, this is a unitless parameter because this is a ohm divide with ohm. Okay, ohm divide with ohm. Uh, remember, don't write XL. Uh, this is a subscript of L. If you write uh, XL, uh, it's a it's a different meaning. Eh, to the macam size baju. Eh, so here is X subscript of L, which is uh, inductive reactance. Uh, so in the in the tune circuit. Uh, we have uh, so if you do the tune circuit in, in the tune circuit we have the uh, L and also the R parameter okay so R so R we have a R over here okay so we have R and L parameter okay so this is a uh, we this one uh, produce a inductive reactance and this this one is a R produce a uh, resistive parameter okay and then we have a uh, bandwidth bandwidth of the tune circuit okay so bandwidth of uh, the tune circuit here is the the bandwidth of the tune circuit eh? so the bandwidth of the tune circuit for example like this okay so this is the bandwidth of the tune circuit so the bandwidth of tune circuit is equal to f resonant divide with the quality fact uh, quality factor so resonant frequency divide with the quality factor so this one the unit is in term of hertz okay so uh, the bandwidth here we don't we want the bandwidth to be as small as possible okay we want the bandwidth of the tune circuit okay the bandwidth of the tune circuit need to be as small as possible so that we can we want to reject the unwanted frequencies and we want to do the process for a specific frequencies only okay so uh, for your information uh, the pre-selector or the tune circuit when we tune to a specific frequencies we actually receive a few radi a few uh, frequency of radio stations not only one okay so tune circuit ini apabila kita tune kepada specific frequency apa yang berlaku adalah uh, the output of uh, this RF section we still have uh, a few frequencies eh, sorry a few station radio station a few set of frequ uh, frequency band a few frequency bands okay meaning that uh, not only one radio station maybe we will listen to uh, maybe the uh, the other signal from other radio station as well will come out okay but we manage to reduce it okay for example if we can uh, receive up to 100 radio stations for example and after the rf section we manage to cut up to three stations only for example okay it's still a uh, more than one okay we we mean we will get the one station only after the if okay over here we will get one station only okay so there's a, a few other process to remove the uh, unwanted frequency band okay so when the pre-selector uh, select the frequency bands, what happens is that uh, there's still a few uh, radio stations within the frequency bands, within the selected frequency band, and we need to do more other process until we manage to get only one radio station. Okay, so if you want, if, if you want to listen to the radio, kita tak nak dengar semua radio, eh? kita nak dengar satu saja, kita tak boleh dengar sekali serentak. Okay, so. Uh, so the next process is okay uh, bandwidth improvement factor is under the sensitivity so 
sensitivity parameter as I mentioned that the ability of the receiver to receive uh, the minimum RF uh, the minimum amplitude of the RF signal and the signal can be demodulated okay we still can receive the signal we can do the demodulation process successfully and here we have the bandwidth improvement factor bi uh, bandwidth improvement is the bandwidth of the rf divided with the uh, bandwidth of the if so what is this actually okay so bandwidth of the rf uh, okay so bandwidth of the rf is the bandwidth that we uh, res that w uh, that have been uh, select by the R tune circuit or the preselector. So this is what we call as the bandwidth of the RF. Okay, and bandwidth of the IF is after uh, we uh, manage to. Uh, to convert uh, so, sorry to to select only uh, one radio station okay IF uh, bandwidth okay so bandwidth of the IF uh, if you see from here uh, you will see that bandwidth of the IF okay bandwidth of the IF uh, so here uh, okay here only one station so from here you can see the bandwidth of the IF uh, so we bandwidth of the IF is smaller than the bandwidth of the RF okay what is IF I will explain later about the IF uh, intermediate frequency okay so initially we we receive a larger bandwidth and then we select uh, only a certain band of frequency so it becomes smaller uh, that one is uh, related to the bandwidth of the intermediate frequency okay so if you see from here okay so bandwidth of the RF is larger than the bandwidth of the intermediate frequency okay so this uh, this ratio we want this ratio to be as small as possible okay as small as possible okay and here this one is a hertz divide with hertz so there's no unit okay it's a unitless parameter and then from here if you do a decibel uh, conversions okay if you do the decibel conversions you will get noise factor improvement okay noise factor improvement so 10 log of bi bandwidth uh, improvement factor okay so why 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 we call it as a bandwidth improvement why the word here is improvement okay so you see that uh, the noise is related with the bandwidth remember ktb okay the 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 bigger the bandwidth the bigger would be the noise power okay so if we manage uh, to reduce the bandwidth to a specific set of frequency only that means we manage to reduce the noise and at the same time we do the improvement so that's why the name here is improvement okay so 10 log bi we got it in term of decibel okay so uh, I will explain to you that uh, okay this is I already I already drawn this picture maybe I will redraw again so that you can have more understanding about this situation okay so okay so if you remember that initially we have uh, the message frequency okay and then we do the modulation process what happened is that uh, this signal will be uh, sorry I this one. okay so this one okay so uh, from uh, from a base baseband signal we convert convert into a, a band pass signal which is a high frequency signal so if you still remember that when we do the modulation process 
we actually translate the frequency from low frequency into higher frequency okay into a higher frequency so this is fc plus fm fc minus fm so this is the modulation process okay so this is what we call as the uh, rf frequencies okay and this is happen at the transmitter later in the receiver what happened in the receiver is that um, in the receiver we want to retrieve the original signal of message the original message signal so that means the process will be reverse okay the process will be reverse so what happened is that before we re uh, retrieve the original F uh, message signal uh, like this eh? okay we have intermediate okay we will translate the frequencies okay we will down convert the frequency from rf to if okay from rf to if okay so this is what we call a uh, f if center frequency this is what we call f uh, if usf upper side frequency and here is f if uh, what we call LSF low, lower side frequency okay in the Thomas's book we use these uh, terms eh? uh, FIF LSF FRF USF okay and by standard of AM the center frequency of the IF okay center frequency of IF by standard is at 455 kilohertz okay so from here okay intermediate frequency is at here okay if okay we convert it into if okay okay and then from here we do the demodulation process okay demodulation process Uh, so you see that we are not jumping from RF to here okay instead we do uh, part uh, uh, half process uh, uh, intermediate frequency and then we convert into the original uh, signal okay so this is uh, what we call as a F this is the bandwidth of the RF this is the bandwidth of the IF intermediate frequency okay Uh, so now we can continue again about that. Uh, so panjang ceritanya eh, sebenarnya. So uh, hopefully I can explain uh, as as much as possible to you. Eh. Okay. Uh, example 2.11. This is about high quality tune circuit. So if you see tune circuit, this is related to the pre selector, the front end of the receiver. Okay, is used to keep the bandwidth narrow to ensure that only the desired signal is passed. Uh, so uh, the tune circuit is very important so that uh, we want to have uh, we want to reject the unwanted frequencies. Okay, we want to reject the unwanted frequencies. So assuming that uh, 10 microhenry of coil uh, resistance of Sorry, assuming that a 10 microhenry coil with resistance of uh, 20 ohm is connected in parallel with the uh, 101 of picofarad capacitor, the circuit resonates at what frequency? So this is the first question. Okay, so the resonant uh, resonant frequency is equal to 1 over square root of L multiplied with C. Okay like uh, like this uh, so there's uh, already have the answer over here so let's uh, see from here so the first question asks what is the resonant frequency fr okay so f resonance is equal to 1 over 2 pi multiplied with square root of lc 
okay so this is a uh, in his, uh, this this equation is uh, we we normally see in this kind of questions for the filters and you see that the resonant frequency is equal to 5 megahertz fr the next question is what is the inductive reactance okay what is the inductive reactance uh, so inductive reactance is equal to 2 pi uh, f resonant l or this is equal to omega l okay omega is 2 pi f uh, omega l so it's 2 pi f l so this the f is related to the resonant frequency okay so you put inside uh, this 5 megahertz and here is uh, the inductor value in Henry and you will get 314 ohm okay and here uh, the next question asks uh, what is the selectivity of the circuit huh. uh, so the question asks what is the selectivity uh, so previously you see that uh, selectivity okay when we talk about selectivity we will uh, normally the question asks about quality okay about the quality okay actually the the question can be more specific actually what is the quality fact what is the quality factor of this tune circuit okay uh, so uh, soalan yang yang lebih baik adalah sepatutnya uh, what is the quality factor for this tune circuit okay because quality factor is one of the parameters for the selectivity okay Salah satu daripada selectivity parameters adalah quality factor. Okay. And then, uh, okay, sorry. So, the quality factor is equal to inductive reactance divided with resistance. So, we get 15.7. No unit, unitless because this one is uh, in term of ohm. This one is in term of ohm. So, no, no unit, unitless. Okay. And then, what is the bandwidth of the tune circuit? Uh, apakah bandwidth kepada tune circuit ini? Okay. So, the bandwidth of the tune circuit is equal to resonant frequency divided with quality factor, which is 318.47 kilohertz. Okay. So, you can do the, you can, uh, you can try using your calculator. So, I suggest you to open your calculator and try to calculate. Do you get uh, the same answer? Yes. Doctor, yeah. why I tak dapat ya 5 megahertz tu? Tak dapat ya? Okay. Saya kira dapat lain. Dapat 11 lebih. So Which L, is L, L, 10 micro kan? Yes, 10 micro Henry. 10 micro. Multiplied with 101.4 pico. Okay, so you get 1.014 times the 10 power of minus uh, 15. Okay, and then uh, you need to do a square root first. Okay, do the square root. Square root of oh, answer. Oh, saya salah, saya salah uh, darab ni. Pasal tak dapat. Okay, and okay. then multiplied with uh, 2 pi. And then uh, 1 divide with answer. So you get uh, 4998056, uh, which is... Uh, approximately 5 mega so sebenarnya dia 4998 something eh so uh, approximately 5 mega my fault so saya uh, salah okay. pecah no saya dah saya dah R tadi mm. sorry doktor ah uh, nasibat you try sekarang eh kalau you try salah dekat final exam lagi susah so better you try now okay uh, uh, other students uh, you need to try uh, practice uh, not using your calculator to to calculate not just uh, to to listen to see what i uh, do here you need to try so good uh, good process uh, you try okay and then uh, uh, find the upper and lower cutoff frequency so this is related to the bandwidth okay first we calculate the bandwidth so because we, when we calculate the bandwidth of the tune circuit okay so this is the lower side okay lower side this is the upper side usf okay upper side frequency so the bandwidth here is uh, 5 mega tadi uh, kita sorry uh, the bandwidth uh, that have been calculated is this one eh 318.47 
okay frequency resonant frequency divide with the uh, quality factor so 5 mega divide with uh, 15.7 so you get 318.47 so what is this actually so this is uh, here here is a resonant frequency okay which is located at 5 megahertz okay and when you uh, uh, wait, wait. So 5 megahertz over uh, the resonant frequency and we calculate the the bandwidth here is uh, 318 uh, sorry 3.8 318.47 kilohertz so the question asks what is the value of upper side frequency and also the lower side frequency so in this case you need to divide uh, the bandwidth into two so that you know the distance over here and you know the distance over here okay so that's why in the answer here you see that uh, the bandwidth is divided with two so that we know the uh, the half portion uh, 0 0.159 megahertz uh, so you can uh, uh, you can do the addition and subtract process to find the upper and lower side frequency okay to find the upper side frequency you can do the summation of 5 megahertz center plus uh, the distance here 0 0.159 so you get the upper side frequency is 5.159 megahertz for the lower side is a 5 megahertz minus 0 0.159 uh, megahertz so you get 4.841 megahertz okay so this is the upper and lower side frequencies okay this one okay so you see that uh, uh, this is uh, the output of the pre-selector that means we select only a certain portion of frequencies only because uh, from the from the antenna actually from the antenna we receive a lot of signals okay we receive a lot of signal in the antenna but after it uh, put inside the after uh, the signal yeah. go through yes i have one one uh, question number 2 tu okay uh, which is apa tu 2 pi wl right yang dekat jawapan 314 tu kan yeah Uh, saya kira dapat 314 tapi belakang dia ada nombor lagi Kita ambil depan dia je ke macam mana? Which is 2 uh, pi darab 5 MHz je ke? Uh, I suggest you to to write uh, the up to 3 decimal point Okay, saya so suggest kamu sehingga 3 decimal point at least uh, Here in the uh, in the example uh, I saw I saw that in this in the many examples uh, they use the approximation value uh, to to make it easy for calculation okay untuk dalam nota ini saya lihat mm -hmm. uh, kebanyakannya dia uh, meringkaskan uh, nilai supaya memudahkan untuk uh, proses pengajaran okey sebenarnya dia ada beberapa point lagi eh so dia tidak tepat 314 so mungkin yang you kira tu betul eh so saya, saya dapat cuba. 314 4159264 okey so 2 pi darabkan dengan 5 mega darabkan dengan uh, tadi uh, ni dah adalah 10 micro eh 10 micro ya yeah, you dapat 314.1592654 okey so my suggestion for you to write uh, at least up to 3 decimal point uh, okey ya yeah, betul sepatutnya dia ada uh, point di sini eh ada beberapa which nilai is, uh, which is uh, 2 pi FRL tu uh, kalau tu, kalau tak dalam kereta 2 pi darab 5 MHz darab 10 micro eh? ah, yeah. kalau darab 10 micro saya dapat jawapan dia lain eh? uh, kalau you kira 2 pi darabkan mm -hmm. dengan uh, 5 MHz mm -hmm. darabkan dengan uh, 10 micro eh Hmm. Ha, so dapat 3, 100 pi Tak saya dapat 314.1592654 Oh ok Dia kena tekan dia punya tu okay, okay. Uh, Gunakan simbol dalam kalkulator tu ada pi kat situ kan 
So she uh, uh, dari, dari sa, uh, uh, so dapat 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 But when it go through, uh, when the signal goes through the preselector, we only select a small portion of the receive uh, signals from the antenna, and then we need to do the rest of the process. Okay. Ah, okay. Now here is uh, okay the type of receiver. So we want now we want to see the the uh, the complete picture of the receiver. Okay. So in your um, lecture notes, uh, only contains two types of receiver, which is the first one is a tune RF receiver, the second one is the super heterodyne receiver. Uh, actually, in the in the real world, in the practical system, we have many 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 types of receiver. Okay, ada banyak jenis receiver. Okay, depending on the applications, depending on the design, depending on the technology. Okay. But what you learn here is uh, is the most basic type of receiver. Okay, the most basic type of receiver. So uh, the first one here is the TRF. This is uh, among the first uh, among the first invention of the AM receiver, which is uh, the TRF. So TRF is very simple. Uh, limit to a single channel low frequency applications. It has a high sensitivity, and it has a few disadvantages okay the bandwidth is inconsistent and varies with center frequency when the tune over wide range of input frequencies so if you if you want to tune to a wide range of frequencies the bandwidth will be inconsistent which will um, which will change the selectivity characteristic of the receiver okay so apabila bandwidth ini dia tidak consistent inconsistent untuk a few set of frequencies so selectivity parameter juga akan berubah and instability due to large number of RF amplifier so this TRF consists of many RF amplifier uh, all tuned to the same center frequency which will cause uh, frequency oscillations okay so if you see that uh, here we have uh, three RF amplifiers tuned to the same frequency So you see that this dotted line. So both uh, all of these three uh, amplifiers are tuned to the same frequency. Okay, all of these are gang up to to tune at the same frequencies. Uh, the gain is not uniform over wide range of frequencies. So these are among the uh, disadvantages. Okay. So uh, here, if you see that uh, we only have. Uh, two stages over here. So we have here is RF section, okay, RF section, and we have uh, both of these. Eh? Both of these is the uh, detector section. Okay. So this is if you see that. Uh, Uh, non coherent okay the word uh, the word non coherent means that uh, this receiver does not uh, using external uh, frequency source to uh, to do the demodulation process okay so receiver ini dia tidak menggunakan external frequency source untuk melaksanakan process demodulations okay So what what I mean is external frequency source is that we we are not injecting the receiver with uh, uh, with the oscillation frequency, okay, which is a carrier frequency FC. Okay, dalam receiver ini kita tidak menggunakan uh, kita tidak inject a carrier frequency untuk melaksanakan uh, process demodulations. Okay, so there's no Uh, external frequency sources that helps to do the demodulation process so it is said that as uh, non coherent for the coherent if you are using a coherent that means there going to be a, a external frequency source that helps the receiver to do the demodulation process uh, so which we, you you will see later in the superheterodyne so his superheterodyne receiver is a coherent receiver 
okay so we will see about this so superheterodyne receiver uh, comes from the word heterodyne heterodyne means uh, mixing okay mixing of two frequencies two or more frequencies together in a non-linear device or to translate one frequency to another using non-linear device okay so this involves mixing uh, different from TRF, TRF don't have the mixing process. Okay, there is no mixing process. Okay. So, superheterodyne consists of uh, this one. Okay, this is superheterodyne. Okay, so superheterodyne, uh, if you see here, we have RF section, we have a converter section, we have intermediate frequency section, and finally we have the detection section so we have four sections in the rf sections we have pre-selector okay which is the tune circuit okay the pre-selector here consists of the tune circuit okay and then we have set of amplifiers over here amplify to amplify the signal and if you see that here, there's a dotted line over here that means pre-selector and the local oscillator are gang tuned. That means both of these are tuned to the same frequency. So gang tuning here means that both of these are tuned to the same frequency. Okay. So here we have uh, RF frequencies. A uh, mixer converter is to convert from RF frequencies to IF frequency. Here I have section to select, okay, select uh, only the desired IF frequency and remove the others. And here do the demo, uh, in the demodulate detector se section we do the demodulation process to get the original signal. Okay, so uh, in the receiver uh, okay so we have we have seen about pre selector so kita dah lihat tentang pre selector previously okay kita dah lihat okay so uh, here if you see that uh, it shows about rf amplifier uh, and provide initial gain and selectivity to minimize the radiation of the local oscillator through the receiving antenna because we receive the signal uh, the signal that we receive con uh, has a low amplitude due to the attenuations so that's why we need to amplify the signal. Okay, kita menerima signal yang lemah kerana signal itu telah uh, melalui beberapa proses attenuations daripada transmitter kepada receiver. So that's why uh, that one uh, that receive signal we need to amplify it so that easy for us to do the the next process. Okay, memudahkan kita untuk melakukan proses seterusnya. Okay, and um, for your information. Uh, up to now, uh, we haven't asked the students in the final exam about uh, the whole picture, of the whole process, okay? We haven't asked the students uh, about this. Uh, so, explain what happened in the superheterodyne receiver. So, kita belum pernah tanya lagi, eh? Even dalam final exam yang sekarang pun kita tak tanya. So, don't worry, eh? Okay, for me, I, I like to ask the students to explain, uh, explain the processes happens inside the superheterodyne receiver so can you explain from the beginning here until here until the speaker <laughs> okay uh, so this is like a uh, like a essay question uh, essay questions eh? yang mana you can explain a uh, section by section okay which is good if you this if uh, you you can uh, you will be considered as understand understand this topic if you can explain the whole process in the superheterodyne receiver okay kamu boleh di dikatakan memahami topik ini sekiranya kamu boleh um, explain apakah proses yang berlaku dalam setiap bahagian dalam superheterodyne receiver okay so uh, we have seen about preselector we have seen about rf amplifier over here uh, telah diterangkan di sini eh and then we will see about converter uh, so mixer converter so the mixer converter uh, section is to convert uh, rf frequency to if frequency okay so what happened is that okay as i have drawn previously 
Okay, yang macam yang telah saya lukis sebelum ini. Okay, so we have the RF uh, here, which is uh, uh, FRF, or we, you can say that also it is known as FC carrier. Okay, center at carrier. So this is a F USB. This is a F LSB. Okay, and mixer converter is to convert this into IF. Okay, so sorry. I... Okay, convert into IF. Okay, so this is FIF. This is uh, FIF uh, USF. Upper side frequency. Uh, this is uh, FIF uh, lower side frequency LSF. Okay, so this is the job of mixer converter to convert. Okay. So that means we down convert the frequency from radio frequency to the intermediate frequency. Okay, that's the job of a uh, mixer converter. So how do the mixer converter, uh, how does the mixer converter do this uh, function? Okay, macam mana? Macam mana nak down convert? Okay, so in the mixer converter, we use a mixer over here. We, we use mixer. Okay, so we have the input FI, F input. So F input is uh, this one, uh, FRF. So you see that from my picture, from my picture, if we transmit, okay, if we transmit the signal contains a double sideband full carrier, that means we have three components. Okay, so what I draw here is actually double sideband full carrier. You can have single sideband uh, with carrier, without carrier, or you can also have double sideband without carrier. Okay, remember if we if we transmit uh, three components, that means we need to do, to process the three components. When we down convert into IF, it still contains the three component. Okay, ada lower and upper sideband. Okay, bergantung kepada jenis AM. Eh? Depend depending on the type of AM that we used. Okay, so you see that here F input, <coughs> we have the oscillator. So uh, in the mixer converter, we have the mixer converter. Okay, if you see here mixer converter. So mixer converter, you see that it used the symbol of X. Uh, ini bukan saja saja. This is a, there's a purpose of this X. <laughs> okay. So this uh, X means that this uh, the process happen in the mixer is actually multiplication process. Uh, apabila you lihat adanya symbol X ini sebenarnya dia melakukan process multiplications for the uh, in the mathematics. Secara matematik, eh, in mathematical theory, it will do the multiplication process. Remember, if you uh, multiply sine and sine, you will get cos and cos. You get a lower and also the upper frequency. Okay, so you see that here uh, we have. Uh, okay, so we have uh, here. Uh, that means we uh, every every uh, frequency component when we put inside the uh, mixer it will multiply into two eh. dia akan jadi dua eh. jadi dia akan jadi sepasang output dia okay so you see that uh, here f input uh, we have uh, f in uh, the output gonna be f input uh, or fo okay outputnya so f fo here adalah keluarannya adalah f uh, this is related to the FIF center. Okay. And we also have the upper side frequency. Eh? The upper side frequency is uh, FFO plus F input. Okay. So this is, uh, this is for the uh, FIF uh, upper side frequency. And this is for the lower side frequency FO minus FI for F. FIF lower side frequency kenapa ada O why there's O over here okay it depends on uh, 
uh, whether this FO is larger than the FI because we don't want the negative frequency kita tak nak negative frequency okay we don't want negative frequency so that's why either FO minus FI or FI minus FO so that we don't get the uh, negative frequency okay and you see that uh, in the IF section, okay, after we convert into IF, we still have three components, eh? center, upper and lower uh, frequency spectrum. Kita masih ada tiga components. So, this down conversion uh, still, uh, remain, uh, still remain the, uh, the number of components, the number of frequency components. Okay, when we do the down conversion, we still maintain the uh, the number of uh, spectrum the number of uh, frequency components okay kita masih ada uh, center upper and lower okay because originally we have three components when we down convert we still have three component also okay so kalau you guna can if you use a ssb single sideband that means uh, when you convert into if it will becomes the same component eh? Uh, maybe uh, two component or one component for the single sideband okay the carrier without sideband or uh, sideband only without carrier so after the mixer converted that's why we have uh, another filter to select okay tune circuit filter to select uh, which one so this is normally in the IF section we have uh, uh, in the IF section we can select the desired frequency okay in the IF section so, uh, okay, FLO, the local oscillator, LO means local oscillator, is usually higher than the FRF. What does it mean? Okay, FLO normally higher, okay, normally higher than all of these frequencies. Eh? FRF, FRF upper, FRF lower. Okay, biasanya, kebiasaannya, uh, FLO is larger than uh, larger than uh, this all of these RF frequencies so ketiga-tiga ini dipanggil sebagai RF frequencies because all of these uh, still within the RF bands what does it mean by RF bands it is within the AM bands AM, uh, AM, AM frequency band is considered as a radio frequency band okay so ketiga-tiga komponen ini adalah RF frequency so we have rf center rf lower rf upper uh, so and then uh, in the if in the if we have uh, fif center fif upper fif lower and the local oscillator normally usually we use a higher frequency why okay because uh, if we have the uh, high frequency uh, the up conversions uh, this will uh, lead to a smaller tuning range okay much easier to design the oscillator that is tunable over smaller radio frequency uh, these are the reason why we use the upper uh, this why the reason why we use a higher frequency for the local oscillator and if the mixer and LO are single state it is called as the converter okay common IF common IF is the center of IF center of if is 455 where is the center the center is here okay the center is here 455 kilohertz okay. this is the standard for am okay the adalah standard into am so adequate selectivity because it is difficult to design sharp band pass okay uh, center frequency is fixed and factory tuned so daripada uh, kilang lagi eh uh, dia punya circuit itu telah didesain untuk berada pada center uh, IF center pada 455 okay why we do like that because we want to be effectively suppress the ACI is the adjacent channel interference okay we want to uh, we want to avoid the uh, or we want to avoid the uh, adjacent channel interference what is the adjacent channel interference gangguan daripada channel bersebelahan okay uh, the disturbance from the uh, from the other channel from the channel close to our frequency okay so we don't want uh, 
okay so this is the we don't want uh, uh, okay we don't want this uh, interference like this eh? so we want to avoid the adjacent channel so we have uh, here we have a channel so this is a channel 1 for example channel 2 channel 3 so each channel uh, is for each radio station for example okay setiap channel mewakili satu radio station kita tak nak uh, we don't want uh, uh, frequency band uh, other frequency band to disturb or to interfere with our frequency band okay so adjacent channel adalah channel bersebelahan the next channel Okay, the next channel bersebelahan kita mengganggu ataupun interfere to our frequency. And uh, there's a two terms here. What we we use a high side injection or the low side injection. So this is uh, if we use FLO larger than the FRF, the term that we use is a high side injection. If we use FLO lower than the RF frequency. It is called as the low side injection. Where is this actually? Okay, di mana ka ini sebenarnya? Eh? So this is related to this frequency. Eh? Okay, related to this frequency. Okay. So you see that. Uh, okay, FIF. If you use a high side injection. That means the uh, FLO larger than the FRF. So therefore, the FIF, in order to get the FIF, we do like this, FLO minus FRF. This is for the uh, high side injection. So if for the low side injection, that means FIF is equal to FRF minus FLO. Okay. Normally we use this one, as explained in the previous slide. Kenapa kita gunakan LO lebih besar daripada RF? Okay. So uh, this is just for the term. Eh. Ini adalah term yang digunakan sahaja. Okay. Tidak perlu confuse. So for the low side injection, uh, low side injection means that FLO uh, lower than the lower than the FRF. Okay. So if you have question, you can ask me, no problem, I will try to answer. So if you don't have question, I will proceed. So uh, here already explained FLO, local oscillator frequency, uh, radio frequency. Radio frequency here is the AM frequency, eh? in this case, AM frequency. Uh, AM frequency apa? Daripada uh, 570, if I'm not mistaken, 570 kilohertz until uh, 1700 kilohertz if i'm not mistaken something like this so this is the range of am band okay for the frf so fif is lower than the frf uh, is within the a few kilohertz center at uh, 455 uh, nanti kita akan tengok contoh eh nanti kita akan tengok contoh so this is lower than uh, FRF. Okay. Ah, yeah, okay. So back to the picture. Okay. So. So previously we have the FRF band. Okay. After the mixer converter, we have the FIF band. Okay. Here, cent, uh, in the RF uh, band, it is centered at the FC, centered at the carrier frequency. And after the mixer converter, uh, we convert it into intermediate frequency. That means uh, here is uh, centered at FIF, which is centered at the 455 kilohertz. Okay. The center is at 455. So, it depends on how, how big is the bandwidth, eh? Tetapi dia punya frequency centernya adalah 455 by standard. Okay. So, you see that. Uh, I will show you uh, example later that uh, in the in the example that I want to show you is that uh, the pre-selector, okay, the pre-selector selects a few channels. 
a few radio station channels okay uh, maybe for example uh, three three radio channels for example so so initially we have uh, for example uh, 200 channels uh, uh, or 100 channel for example received by the antenna and then the pre-selector only cut a certain portion of the bandwidth so we managed to get for example contoh eh uh, three channels only okay and then we down convert to IF we still have three channel uh, this is just example eh tidak semestinya tiga channel eh not, not necessary three channel I just give you example okay initially we have many channels antenna receive many 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 frequencies and then pre-selector cut the frequencies band into into a few sets uh, into a smaller band okay but that smaller band is not only for one channel maybe more than one channel maybe okay maybe ada beberapa channel uh, di dalam situ eh selep, di, uh, selepas uh, pre-selector and go into uh, the signals goes to the mixer converter section we convert it into intermediate frequencies so when we down convert into intermediate frequencies uh, we still have uh, the same number of channel okay i still have uh, for example previously is three channels i have now also three channels example okay uh, pada point sini saya masih ada i still have three channels if uh, if after if after the pre selector i i managed to to uh, to select only three channels and then after pre uh, after mixer converter i still have the same three channels but the frequency already been down convert into IF tetapi frekuensinya telah di down convert kepada intermediate frequencies and after uh, when the signals goes to the IF section what happen is that we have the amplifier uh, sorry we have the filter over here this filter will select only one frequency band okay so here we have at the end of uh, IF section, we manage to to select only one channel. So you see that the bandwidth of uh, the band uh, the filter the bandpass filter over here uh, has a sharp cut off frequencies. Okay, so that we can select only uh, the desired channel. Okay, so after the IF section, I will have the channel the single channel that i want to listen okay so bila kita, saya tune kepada satu radio station saya akan dapat channel tersebut pada akhir if section so this is still uh, fif eh? this is still in the if okay from here we convert into the uh, bmt okay here we convert into VMT. Uh, okay. So, uh, tu cerita dia panjang eh sebenarnya. Okay. So, uh, here, uh, this is a IF. Uh, so, this is a IF section. IF section consists of uh, a filter and also the the amplifier. So, we, we filter the, the bandwidth. We filter the band, the frequency band, so that we only get uh, output one channel only, specific channel okay one specific channel and then we amplify the signal the IF eh? this is under uh, we still uh, in the IF domain eh? masih dalam IF domain frequencies and then we amplify so that easy for us to do the demodulation process okay and then here demodulator is inside the detector section okay so what happened in the detector section it will do it will do the demodulation process uh, it's up to you to use uh, any type okay you can use any type of detector uh, previously you have learned about diode detector transistor detector and other types of detector you can use in the detector section okay and then you can amplify and then the signal goes to the speaker uh, so that's why Okay. Image. Uh, so maybe before I before I uh, 
uh, explain about the image maybe I want to explain to you about uh, an example okay saya akan tunjuk contoh eh daripada buku Tomasi okay uh, this is I take a picture so this is from the Wayne Tomasi's book uh, fifth edition eh uh, the first edition that I give you in the folder uh, that one is uh, does not have picture like this eh? mungkin ada eh? saya tak perasan eh? uh, but this is from the fifth edition okay ini daripada edition yang kelima uh, okay don't worry uh, I, I will explain to you eh? okay no problem okay so, uh, this uh, this example I always uh, show to the students so that you can have uh, more understanding about the process that happens inside the mixer converter when we convert from RF to IF so what happened actually in the frequency band okay and for your information this also has been asked in the previous master final exam pernah ditanya eh, dalam uh, final exam yang sebelum ini okay so uh, if you see uh, okay okay uh, ini tak ada I thought I can Okay So uh, here if you see that uh, I Maybe I use my This uh, way eh. Okay, so uh, you see that uh, here, uh, this one is the pre-selector. Okay, so uh, previously, uh, before pre-selector, we have the antenna section. Eh? We have the antenna. So antenna receive uh, many frequency bands. Okay, bukan hanya AM saja dia boleh receive uh, FM and other radio bands. Okay, and in this example, the pre-selector bandwidth, okay, the bandwidth of the pre-selector is already defined here from 535 to 565 kHz. So, this is the range of the uh, AM. Eh? So, AM frequencies daripada uh, 500 lebih from 500 something until 17 something. Some uh, some standards is up to 16 something. Eh? So, uh, never mind. So, pre-selector selects uh, uh, the the AM frequencies band. Okay. So, you see that the bandwidth here is around uh, 30 kilohertz of bandwidth in the pre-selector. Okay. So, in this example, actually, we want to listen to channel 2. Channel 2 has a frequency of uh, 550 kilohertz. Eh, Semua boleh nampak, eh, ni. Kalau tak jelas, saya boleh besarkan lagi. Okay. So, um, we want actually to listen to channel 2. Eh. We want to listen to channel 2. Uh, which has a frequency of 550 okay so in order to do that uh, we use a pre-selector that has a wider range which is around 30 kilohertz of bandwidth okay so what happened is that uh, the pre-selector selects from 535 kilohertz up to uh, 565 so from 535 uh, from 535 until uh, 565 over here okay. so from 535 until uh, 565 kilohertz and within this frequency band actually we have three channels channel 1, channel 2, channel 3 uh, actually we want this eh? we want to listen to this channel only okay and and then this is uh, this is 
this is under the RF okay this is still RF RF frequency okay RF because this is uh, within the this is within the AM band okay dia berada dalam AM band eh? masih berada dalam AM band Sorry, I'm gonna need to... Okay. So, we are still in the AM band uh, RF uh, frequencies. So, what happened is that uh, the signals, all of these three channels, goes to the mixer converter section. So, mixer converter section is connected to the local oscillator which uh, has a frequency uh, FLO 1005 kilohertz. So, you see that this FLO is larger than all of these frequencies. Okay, so this LO frequency is larger than all the FRF frequencies. So that means this is a high side injection process. Okay, so what happened after the mixer converter? That means we down convert the frequency into intermediate frequency. So all of these frequency con all of this frequency component will be down convert into intermediate frequency. So how does the uh, the process happen. Macam mana process itu berlaku? Okay. So, remember that we have how many components over here? We have uh, 1, uh, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. That means we we will convert all of these 7 frequencies into intermediate frequencies. Okay. The first one is, uh, for example, here 535. Okay, look at my, uh, on the right side over here, on the right side. Uh, when we do the down conversion, we do FLO minus FRF. Okay, FLO minus FRF. So, 1005 minus the first one, 535 kilohertz. Eh? Uh, so, 1005 minus 535 kilohertz, we get... 470 kilohertz okay uh, so now i'm doing the uh, i'm doing the process of down converting the first channel channel 1 saya sedang melakukan proses down conversion untuk channel 1 okay the next frequency part is 1005 minus 540 kilohertz so this one is uh, you will get uh, 465 kilohertz and then uh, 1005 minus 545 kilohertz so we get 460 kilohertz so I already down convert the first channel then I down convert the second channel channel 2 1005 minus 550 I will get 455 kilohertz 1005 minus 555 kilohertz I get 450 kilohertz 100 uh, okay so i already done the second channel down conversion for the second channel okay saya telah melakukan down convert second channel now i want to uh, down convert the third channel from 555 until 565 okay so 1005 minus 555 i get 450 kilohertz 1005 minus 560 I get 445 kilohertz 1005 minus 565 kilohertz I get 440 kilohertz so I have already down convert the third channel now I will redraw again the frequency spectrum so what happened is that you see that channel 1 when we convert uh, down convert the channel 1 uh, the frequency range becomes uh, from 460 until 470. That means the first channel will go here, okay, in the IF uh, band. Daripada 460 until 470. So this is channel 1. Okay, dia jadi terbalik. It will be a uh, mix up. Okay, so uh, the lower part becomes the upper part in the IF section. And then, channel 2, channel 2 still remain in the center. Okay, channel 2 still remain in the center from 450 until 460. Channel 3, 
frequency range is between 450 sorry between 440 until 450 so channel 3 is uh, here uh, channel 3 over here so you see that channel 3 uh, has been converted into the lower side frequency okay so uh, here you see that uh, here uh, each of these okay this is uh, this is FIF center okay FIF center uh, we have uh, three FIF center kita ada tiga FIF center we have three FIF center okay so we have three FIF centers and each of these frequency has pair lower and upper lower IF frequency and also upper IF frequency Okay, setiap channel ini dia ada uh, IF lower and also IF upper. Okay, IF lower and also IF upper. IF lower and IF upper. Uh, so this, uh, after redraw the frequency band, we saw this uh, uh, frequency spectrum. Eh? Ini adalah keluaran. This is the output of the mixer converter. You see that previously we have three channels. Uh, after pre-selector, after down convert, after down conversion, also we have, we still have three components, three channels. Sorry, three channels. Okay. Selepas itu, so what's next? Okay. After this, uh, the signal will go through, will go through the uh, IF, IF section. Okay. So in the center here is the mixer converter section. Over here is the IF section. IF section has a single freak, uh, single uh, bandpass filter to select the desired frequency band. So in this example, actually we want to listen to channel two. So that's why the filter in the IF section needs to be tuned. Okay, it needs to have a center frequency at four five five. Okay, kalau kita nak tune if you want to tune to channel 2, that means the filter needs to be tuned at center frequency of that channel. So since in this example, we want to listen to channel 2, that means uh, the center frequency would be 455 kilohertz. So the filter needs to be tuned at 455 kilohertz. And this filter must have a very sharp cut of filter. Uh, so you see that this filter has a bandwidth of 10 kilohertz only so that means we can select only one channel okay so the output of the uh, the output of the if section we will get the second uh, we will get the uh, channel 2 okay we will get the channel 2 okay and this later will be passed to the uh, detector section so after here after the IF filter it will go to the detector section uh, okay and then uh, maybe we uh, this one okay okay ini kalau ada, uh, tak ada soalan saya akan proceed kepada ex, uh, contoh yang seterusnya so you see that if you read uh, Wayne Thomas's uh, book uh, in the fifth edition this is under chapter five Okay, and then uh, example 5.3. Uh, ini juga pernah ditanya. This is also has been asked in the previous exam. Uh, exactly the same question like this. Eh? Okay, for an AM super heterodyne receiver that uses a high side injection, that means FLO larger than the FRF. Uh, oscillate the frequency of 1355 kilohertz so determine the IF carrier IF center IF USF then also FIF uh, LSF that made up of upper uh, that made up of carrier upper and lower side frequency so this is a FRF so you are given FRF wave radio frequency wave from 895 kilohertz until uh, 905 kilohertz Okay, so this is the up. Uh, this is the uh, center. Uh, Nine hundred is the center RF. 
905 is the upper frequency RF and 895 is the lower RF frequency. So the question asks how much is the FIF? Uh, the question asks uh, FIF center. Okay, FIF center. Okay, sorry, but I need to open it. And then, yeah. FIF center and then the question asks about FIF uh, lower side and also F uh, LSF eh? uh, sorry ni pakai mouse eh? susah sikit and also FIF uh, upper side ok USF nah, ini ada kat sini lah eh? so FIF USF and also FIF LSF so in order to find the center frequency, that means you can uh, you can calculate by uh, subtract the local oscillator frequency with the center of the RF. Center is at 900 megahertz uh, kilohertz. So 1355 minus 900 kilohertz, you get FIF center. Okay, 455 kilohertz. And in order to find the FIF, uh, FIF upper side frequency, you need to uh, subtract the local oscillator with the highest RF, uh, sorry, lowest RF frequency. Okay, untuk mendapatkan FUSF yang yang atas eh, yang tinggi, uh, you perlu uh, subtract F local oscillator with the uh, lower RF frequency which is 895 Kenapa perlu macam ni? Why? If you minus with 905 You will get the lower IF Okay, if you minus with the lower RF You will get the upper side frequency of the intermediate band Okay And for the FIF lower side frequency in order to get that FLO minus FRF of the upper side, which is 905. So you get 450. So the range of IF frequencies after down conversion, we get from four, uh, 450 kilohertz until 460. Center at 455. Uh, this is very simple uh, direct conversion. Eh? Ini simple sahaja. Okay. Okay. So, if you don't have question, I will proceed with the next topic. Okay. I will proceed with the next topic, which is uh, image frequency. Uh, ini, eh? Dengan image. What is image frequency? So, this. Uh, uh, semua pelajar masih ada, eh? Harap saya tak cakap uh, Ada Dr. Ah, okay. Ada uh, Kalau dengar suara saya uh, Okay saya rasa tenang sikit ada, lah eh ada. Sebab kalau semua senyap saya risau eh dah habis nanti semua Tak dengar pun eh so, Macam apa yang berlaku dekat internet eh Okay So Image frequency uh, Image frequency is, a fre is any frequency other than the selected radio frequency uh, other than selected radio frequency carrier that if allowed to enter to the receiver and mix with the local oscillator it will produce the cross product frequency that is equal to the intermediate frequency ha, apa benda ni? so image frequency is the unwanted frequency and if we let the frequency pass the pre-selector it will go to the mixer converter what happen is that it will create image frequency yeah. so it is the job it is the job of the pre-selector or tune circuit to to select properly so that the image frequency does not uh, uh, does not come out at the output of the pre-selector uh, pre okay adalah menjadi tugas pre-selector Untuk memastikan, untuk select, untuk memastikan image frequency ini tidak masuk ke dalam sistem. Okay, so the front end uh, has the responsibility to select a certain bandwidth uh, by not 
accidentally selecting the image okay so the the pre-selector needs to properly select the frequency band so that the image does not come inside the uh, does not include it inside the system otherwise we will create a image a mirror image okay otherwise kalau dia masuk ke dalam sistem dia akan create satu mirror image okay this is what we call as a mirror image so what happen is that if the image frequency goes through the system uh, the receiver will be unable to demodulate to demodulate the original uh, signal apa yang berlaku adalah receiver tidak dapat untuk melaksanakan proses demodulation kerana ada dua uh, frekuensi yang so, seolah-olah uh, sama eh mirror okey dia seolah-olah mirror so the receiver has will will have the difficulty to select which one Okay, they uh, will have the difficulty to to make a decision which one to select, the real RF or the image, because both will look uh, like the same mirror. Okay, so uh, that's why uh, the pre-selector plays a very important role so that this image frequency does not uh, come inside the the system. Okay, adalah menjadi tugas pre-selector. So if you see that from here. Uh, okay, so uh, here is the FRF, and the image is located at two times the radio frequency input. So RF here is from the input to the receiver. Okay, ini adalah daripada input receiver. Okay, remember kita ada dalam receiver we have the LO. Okay, so the image image is located at distance uh, 2IF pada jarak 2IF dua kali IF frequencies adalah lokasi uh, the location of the image okay so that means the tune circuit okay the tune circuit should not select the whole of this okay tune circuit tidak boleh select kesemua ini okay the tune circuit must select a frequency band lower than the image okay lower than the image so that's why the pre-selector needs to select a certain frequency band okay so that the image is located outside from the selected frequencies okay so mathematically for high side injection the image frequency is f image the location of image is located at flo plus fif or you can also calculate f image equal to frf plus two times fif okay this is the uh, the mathematical equation to find the location of the image okay so example of image frequency determine the image frequency for a standard broadcast receiver using 455 kilohertz of a uh, center if frequency tuned to a station at 620 kilohertz ah. so what does it means uh, okay so we tune to a radio station so when we tune to the radio station that means this is actually the carrier okay this is actually the carrier or this is we can say that this is the FRF okay so uh, the question asks uh, determine the image frequency so we want to find the image so uh, we have FIF over here and we have FRF okay actually you can also calculate FRF plus 2IF Okay, two IF, but in this example, uh, it use uh, FLO plus FIF. Dalam example ini dia menggunakan persamaan uh, FLO plus FIF. First of all, the example in this example it tries to find the uh, local oscillator frequencies. So local if lo local oscillator frequencies is equal to uh, F RF plus FIF for the high side injection because uh, uh, okay. standard broadcast.
cars receiver team okay so uh, okay dalam sini uh, in this example it doesn't mention that it is a, a low side injection or high side injection okay but uh, the question doesn't mention about uh, either one high side or low side injection but in this example it uses a high side injection okay that means the local oscillator is assumed to have a higher frequency compared to the rf frequency so first it tries to find the local oscillator frequencies flo plus sorry frf uh, rf plus fif okay so you get 17 1075 kilohertz for the local oscillator then the image is located at flo plus fif okay so you get image is located at 1530 kilohertz okay but if you do using this equation also you can find uh, 620 uh, plus 2 times uh, 455 okay you will get the same answer okay penat you kira sebenarnya ini pun dah boleh pakai eh, sebenarnya you will get the same answer 1530 okay the next example is uh, about uh, image frequency rejection ratio uh, the ability of the pre-selector uh, this IFRR shows the ability of the receiver to reject the image frequency it is defined as the uh, IFRR parameter. So how to calculate the IFRR? Again, this is about pre uh, about the pre-selector. Okay, we are act actually we are talking about the pre-selector or the tune circuit. Okay, nama lainnya adalah tune circuit. Okay, the front end of the receiver. Okay. So the image rejection is equal to uh, first we need to find the alpha parameter image rejection parameter this is a unitless parameter so this is equal to square root of 1 plus q square quality factor square rho square okay and then uh, the rho parameter is what we call as the re rejection ratio rho parameter is f image uh, divide with frf minus frf over f image so you can uh, neglect this one so uh, in order to avoid confusing so this is a row parameter this is a unitless parameter okay so from if you get row parameter you have the q parameter then you can do the image rejection uh, uh, you can find the alpha parameter image rejection so the q parameter quality uh, factor parameter is equal to uh, this is not xl uh, uh, class uh, please correct your notes this supposed to be subscript of l okay subscript of l uh, ini xl size baju eh bukan eh so uh, x subscript of l inductive reactance divide with the re uh, resistance of the tune circuit okay this is related to the tune circuit okay the inductive reactance of the tune circuit divide with the resistance of the tune circuit so you get the q parameter or you can also use a f a resonant divide with the bandwidth okay so you will get the same answer okay so once you get the alpha parameter then you can calculate alpha in term of uh, decibel okay because normally i i f r r we mention in term of decibel so I have RR in term of decibel, you get uh, 20 log alpha. 20 log alpha in term of decibel. Okay. So this is the example. Okay. From the previous example, calculate the image rejection uh, of the tune circuit with a Q of quality factor of 40. Previously, okay, in the previous uh, example, example yang sebelum ni uh, we have we get the f image remember we find the f image f image equal to 1530 if you still remember this is uh, kilohertz okay and uh, in the previous example the rf 
the RF frequency is given as 620 kilohertz. Okay, find the find the IFRR parameter. So in order to do that, first find the rho parameter. Rho parameter uh, image rejection ratio parameter is F image divided with uh, FRF minus FRF divided with F image. So 1530 over 620 minus 620 over 1530. So you get 2.0625. No unit, unitless. Okay. From this, you can find the alpha parameter. Okay. Alpha parameter is what we call as a, a image rejection parameter. Okay. Alpha parameter. Uh, square root of 1 plus q square rho square so I suggest you to make a bracket over here to make uh, to avoid uh, wrong calculations eh? okay uh, kesilapan pelajar the previous mistakes uh, students uh, normally do uh, mistakes over here okay when they do this calculation they wrongly calculated the value okay because here you need to uh, mu multiply both of these first and then you need to plus with one okay remember in the opinion to root and yes but you uh, the sequence is that you need you supposed to multiply this first and then you plus with one and then square root so you get uh, 82.5061 again this is no unit okay and then from here we can calculate in terms of decibel so 20 log alpha okay 20 log alpha so you get 38.33 db any you believe guna calculator you can try using your calculator for this example uh, so hopefully you can get this value okay so uh, so this one actually we want the image rejection value to be uh, to be as uh, small as possible eh? kita inginkan uh, nilai dia uh, sekecil yang mungkin eh? ok kalau kita buat pengiraan ini eh? so this uh, reflect the the ability of the pre-selector to uh, to remove to reject the image frequency ini uh, parameter ini menggambarkan uh, kebolehan pre-selector untuk membuang atau uh, reject uh, the image frequency inside the receiver okay so do you have question to ask because uh, we already finished the first part of chapter 3 eh? ada soalan nak tanya so far tak ada saya kan klik pun dapat sama macam doktor uh, dia punya jawapan okay very good Uh, doktor, oh, yes. nak, nak tanya uh, Yang tadi channel 1, 2, 3 tu Kita after uh, down guna IF amplifier tu Kita mesti ambil uh, dia punya channel tu Which is channel 2 lah. The previous example lah uh, yeah, Dalam PDF tu lah buku, uh, Yang uh, example dalam uh, formasi punya buku tu Okay, yeah Yang atas tu uh, selepas kita converter tu uh, jadi up, up filter tu kita mesti pilih channel tu eh maksudnya kita tak boleh pilih channel 1 ataupun channel 3 ok uh, in dalam example ini in this example actually uh, in this example uh, the the question said that we want to select uh, channel 2 uh, if you ask me yes you can channel you can select uh, channel 3 no problem you can select channel 1 no problem but in this example uh, mm -hmm. it is said that uh, we want to listen to channel 2 ok uh, ada dinyatakan dalam dia punya soalan kita nak kita nak ambil uh, channel 2 ok so oh, that's what kalau dia tak mention tu maksudnya kita ambil mana-mana satu channel pun uh, acceptable lah uh, it depends on the IF filter oh, it uh, bergantung kepada IF filter uh, because uh, here in this example, it is mentioned that the IF filter is between 450 and 460. Uh, that one is, uh, that means we, we will select channel 2. If you want to select other channel, kalau kamu nak select channel yang berlainan, maknanya you punya filter needs 
uh, to be select at that frequency band for example okay contoh eh kalau you nak select channel 1 for example that means your IF filter needs to uh, to be between 460 and 470 ataupun kalau you nak select channel 3 uh, your IF filter needs to uh, to be able to select need to have a bandwidth between 440 until 450 for channel 3 okay for channel 3 okay doctor ah uh, uh, dia uh, Dalam example ini memang dia nak select channel tu. Uh, okay. uh, kalau you tanya saya, memang boleh kita boleh select channel yang berlainan, tapi dia bergantung. Uh, it depends on the filter parameter. The nah, filter sebab, parameter. Uh, sebab tadi, sebab tadi saya confuse disebabkan uh, doktor cakap uh, untuk intermediate frequency tu common dia punya frequency tu adalah 455. So kita kena pilih channel tu. Okay. Uh, 455 is the center when we convert from RF to IF okay, apabila kita convert daripada uh, radio frequency kepada intermediate frequency uh, yang mana ini berlaku dalam mixer converter section what happen is that uh, after the down conversion the center would be at the 455 kilohertz uh, so in this case if you see from here daripada example ini uh, the RF frequency range from 535 until 565 kilohertz. So when we down convert this uh, in the mixer converter section, um, the the intermediate frequency the uh, uh, intermediate frequency yang terhasil uh, berada pada range uh, certain range of RF frequency center at the 455. Okay, so that's why the local oscillator is. Uh, is set to have the certain frequency so that we can get the output center at the 455 kilohertz. So from there, from here, from the IF frequency, then you can have uh, any kind of filter to select which frequency that you want. Oh, okay, uh, doctor. The uh, 455 ini uh, sebenarnya, this is uh, uh, this is actually the, the standard for the AM uh, center IF. Eh. Uh, apabila kita convert kepada IF uh, Tak kira eh, berapa banyak channel yang ada uh, Doesn't matter if we have uh, more than 3 For example, if I have uh, uh, 10 channels for example Contoh eh uh, But the center needs to be centered at the 455 So that we can easily do the next process Okay So if you want to select other channel uh, band That means you need to have a certain uh, ve uh, your IF filter needs to be a uh, needs to have a specific bandwidth of that channel. So, kalau saya nak select channel 1, maknanya saya punya IF filter mestilah berada pada uh, 460 until 470 so that I can select channel 1. Okay, so that means uh, IF section we want to get very specific frequency band dalam IF section. Because when we do the demodulation process, it's uh, easy for us to do uh, only single frequency band. Okay, single frequency band. Daripada kita nak buat demodulation tiga channel, eh, very difficult. Eh, uh, better to have, better to do the demodulation for single channel. Okay. Right. Okay, boleh okay. eh? Boleh. Okay, ada lagi soalan nak tanya? No problem. Uh, saya suka pelajar bertanya eh, so don't don't be shy don't be afraid uh, uh, saya pensyarah yang suka ditanya oleh pelajar uh, sebab saya risau kalau you jadi pasif uh, i i risau you tak faham itu ya okey uh, doktor ya yeah. soalan Silakan. tadi tu dia based on example 12.2.12 uh, kan yang dekat slide tu yang ini uh, no 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 ini bukan yang slide tadi yang kita, yang kita, yang buat tadi tu which is 2.3 tu uh, 2.13 dia 2 related with ini. related with 2.12 lah kan uh, ah yeah, ya uh, 2.13 this example is hmm. related with example 2.13 because in this example we use the value from example 2.12 Ah, okay. Kita ambil daripada uh, uh, sebelum ni lah. Hmm. Okay. 
So if right. you see the image, image, uh, uh, okay, um, image, uh, image will happen if the pre-selector does not properly filter out the image frequencies. Okay, dia boleh masuk ke dalam sistem sekiranya pre-selector itu tidak uh, select betul-betul lah -betul, eh, dia punya frequencies. Okay. Okay, so. Okay, doktor. Ada soalan lain? Kalau tak ada, saya boleh proceed lah. Ya? Ah, tak ada. Okay, kalau tak ada, saya akan teruskan. Uh, okay, uh, saya harap pelajar boleh bersabar. Eh. Uh, since kamu berada di rumah masing-masing, uh, you can do, you can, re, uh, you can do whatever you want. You can relax. Uh, you can go to the toilet. You can go to the kitchen. Uh, to do whatever uh, so, so sekarang puasa eh, so tak boleh makan eh, untuk yang muslim uh, uh, you can santai eh, sementara tapi uh, but for me I will proceed ok saya akan teruskan eh. uh, because uh, ECS actually ECS covers a wide range of topics eh. dia punya topics tu terlalu besar sebenarnya eh. and for your information actually we already we already uh, cut many subtopics ok Okay, from since uh, 2014 uh, until now, we already cut a few subtopics, so that easy for the students to to understand what uh, the basic concept of communication system. So actually, the uh, this subject is not difficult. It is actually uh, I can say it is uh, easy to medium, uh, easy to medium uh, subject. Uh, you just need to to understand the basic concept uh, but the the calculation is not too difficult if you see from the test actually dia punya calculation tidak susah kalau you faham eh the calculation is a simple but how to do that you need to understand okay kamu perlu faham macam mana ia berfungsi so that you boleh do the calculations so uh, don't worry about the previous test uh, you should score in the project kamu perlu score yang terbaik dalam project and hopefully in the final exam also you can score uh, i will i will uh, i will explain to you in the in my lecture class and i also will give some uh, hints okay uh, for your information uh, students um, biasanya normally i say that okay this is important you need to know about this uh, normally i say to the student like that okay ini penting untuk uh, fun, uh, ini topik ini penting you kena tahu uh. So when you listen to to that, what I say like if I say like that, that means that will come out either in the test or in the final exam. Okay, so uh, I will give you the keywords later. If this is important or not, so don't worry. Okay. So the next, uh, this is so we have learned about AM amplitude modulations. So now we want to learn about frequency modulation. Okay, and also phase modulation. So this is related to FM and also PM, phase modulation. Okay, uh, and this is also part of your projects. Okay, part of your projects. So remember in angle modulation, uh, we have FM and also PM. FM, a uh, frequency modulation, is the process of changing the frequency of the carrier in accordance with the amplitude variation of the input signal okay and then for the pm phase modulation is the phase modulation is the process of changing the phase of the carrier in accordance with the amplitude variation of the input signal okay remember that only the carrier characteristic will change during this process during this modulation process okay so in uh, angle modulations you see that uh, fm and pm okay so when in the angle modulation you see that uh, if we do uh, if we do fm process we are actually indirectly doing the pm process Okay. Kalau kita melaksanakan proses FM Secara tak langsung Kita juga melakukan proses PM 
because both of these are interrelated to each other okay if we do the pm if we do pm process phase modulation process actually we are indirectly doing the fm process okay kalau kita melaksanakan process phase modulation sebenarnya kita secara tak langsung melakukan process frequency modulation so both of these are interrelated to each other dia seperti um, uh, kembar tak serupa eh, sebenarnya eh. boleh katakan analoginya eh. nanti kita akan lihat eh. so both of these um, actually we play around with the frequency and also the phase of the carrier so you see that in angle modulation this is the general equation of the angle modulation okay uh, so you see that in the transmitter okay so here is a vt eh? okay vt angle modulation so 2 pi fct plus theta t so what happened is theta t will change in accordance with the input signal okay and for the students i suggest you to make big bracket here because all of this belongs to sine function uh, berhati-hati eh kesemua ini adalah terletak di bawah sine function be careful about that Okay, so in angle modulation, theta t change in accordance with the VMT. Theta t, uh, uh, theta t uh, is a function of VMT. Okay, theta t adalah uh, mengandungi VMT parameters. Okay, so theta t, okay, the angle, the angle, uh, so this is related to the carrier. So the angle of the carrier uh, so this one a uh, function of time is equal to function of vmt so both of these are related okay theta t adalah berkait rapat dengan uh, vmt okay where vmt is equal to vm sine 2 pi fmt so for your information uh, when uh, when thomas's book we use a sine function if you read other literature books uh, they also use cosine function okay you can use cos no problem tak ada masalah okay later also we uh, later in the later example uh, we will also we use will will use a cos function so normally if we use uh, if we use cos in this uh, general equation we also will use cos in the message equation supaya senang untuk calculate so that easy for us to do the calculation okay biasanya uh, dalam example dalam exam test uh, apabila kita menggunakan cosine uh, dalam uh, general equations kita juga menggunakan cosine dalam uh, message uh, freak, uh, message equation eh vmt so if you use a sign that means easy for us to do sign and sign okay uh, you will see later about that. Uh, there are uh, there are a few definitions over here. Uh, ada empat defini there are four definitions. Eh? The first one is the instantaneous phase deviation, uh, which is what we call as the theta t. Okay, so this is from the general equation. So you see that uh, theta t is defined as the instantaneous phase deviation so what is instantaneous phase deviation is the instantaneous change of phase of the carrier uh, at a particular time depending on the uh, variation of the input okay so uh, instantaneous phase deviation the unit is radian okay so parameter ini adalah theta t so this parameter is theta t the unit is radian the second definition is what we have here is the instantaneous phase. Okay, keseluruhan fasa tersebut. Eh? So instantaneous phase is the precise phase uh, of the carrier at a particular time, at a, set, at a specific time. Okay, it is a, spec, it is a specific 
phase of the career at a particular time pada satu-satu masa nilai sebenar fasa karya pada satu-satu masa it is defined as omega ct plus theta t omega ct here is 2 pi f ct okay omega c here is a 2 pi f ct and here theta t is a function of vmt okay which is if you see from the general equation actually instantaneous phase okay so i So the instantaneous phase is actually this one. Okay, the whole of this is in is what we call as the instantaneous phase. The unit is in term of radian. Okay, unitnya adalah radian. Next, the third uh, definition, uh, the, the third definition about instantaneous frequency. Uh, so. Instantaneous frequency is the instantaneous change of frequency of the carrier okay, in accordance with the input variation. Okay, so instantaneous frequency, we get it by doing uh, uh, what we call as a first uh, derivative, pembezaan. Okay, pembezaan daripada uh, phase Okay, the deviation, uh, sorry, uh, the first derivative of the phase is what we call as the uh, instantaneous frequency deviation. So, here is what we call as the theta prime t. Okay, so theta prime t is uh, equal to d dt of theta t. adalah pembezaan kepada d dt of theta t ok so the first uh, uh, phase the first uh, what we call as the first derivative of the uh, instantaneous phase deviation is the instantaneous frequency deviation so pembezaan pertama uh, untuk instantaneous phase akan menghasilkan instantaneous frequency deviation ok the unit is in term of radian per second or you can also in term uh, say it as uh, in term of hertz so radian per second is also known as the in term of hertz okay so uh, uh, this is uh, yeah, okay nanti later we will see about this instantaneous frequency the the fourth definition instantaneous frequency is equal to the first uh, instantaneous frequency is the precise frequency of the carrier at a uh, at a particular point of time okay it is uh, it is also the first derivative of the instantaneous phase pembezaan daripada instantaneous phase akan menghasilkan instantaneous frequency so d dt Okay, the first derivative of the instantaneous phase d dt of omega ct plus theta t, you will get instantaneous frequency. Okay, so uh, here is omega c plus uh, theta prime t. So the unit is radian per second or in term of hertz. Also, you can also write in term of hertz. So you see that when you do the first derivative, uh, there will there will be no um, uh, sorry the the time parameter will be uh, will be removed. Eh? So that's why you get the omega c, which is uh, here is two pi f two pi f c. So two pi f c plus uh, theta prime t. Okay. Nanti kita akan lihat pembezaan dan kamiran. So you see that uh, here theta prime t is equal to d dt of theta t okay and if you want to find theta t you need to do the integral integral process okay integral of theta prime t dt so ni terbaliklah so daripada pembezaan kepada kamiran okay uh, we will see about this later about this eh? so uh, tak perlu confuse uh, very easy this one 
Okay, so you see that uh, instantaneous frequency, uh, 2 pi f, eh? actually it is a 2 pi f, so this is actually 2 pi f uh, multiplied with, uh, sorry, So this is uh, sorry, okay uh, sorry. So this is two pi. The unit is radian per cycle, and this is F C. The unit is cycle per second. Okay, so cycle and cycle you can uh, get a radian per second, and then this theta prime t. The unit is also radian per second. So that's why the output here you get a uh, the unit of uh, instantaneous frequency is equal to 2 pi f c plus theta prime t in term of radian per second or in term of hertz. Okay. Deviation sensitivity. Uh, so, so there are there are many parameters actually. Eh? So I will explain to you one by one. Eh? Uh, deviation sensitivity. Okay, we have two deviation sensitivity. Okay, which is a uh, KP and also KF. Okay, deviation uh, KP is for the uh, phase deviation sensitivity parameter. KF is the frequency deviation sensitivity parameter. Okay, so uh, this deviation sensitivity uh, is contained in the theta t function. Okay. So this theta t, okay, theta t is equal to kp vmt, or you can say that kp vm sine 2 pi fmt. Kalau kita kembangkan, eh, if we uh, if we elaborate the equations, it will become kp vm sine uh, 2 pi fmt. And for the frequency modulation, uh, so because this is related to PM, eh, this is related to PM, this is related to FM. So we are actually explaining both of it. Eh. Both processes are interrelated. So that's why, uh, that's why I say that both are interrelated to each other. Okay, both of these are under the category of angle modulation. That means uh, the angle of the carrier change in accordance with the input. Okay, and theta prime t is equal to kf vmt so kf uh, vm sine 2 pi fmt okay where kp and kf are constant parameter okay kp and kf are constant parameters kp is the uh, phase deviation sensitivity kf is the frequency deviation sensitivity parameter both are uh, both are constant parameters. So deviation sensitivities are the output versus input transfer function for the modulators, which give the relationship between what output parameter change with respect to the specified changes in the input signal. Uh, so apakah nilai, uh, what is the the value of K, uh, Kp and Kf? Okay. So uh, these um, deviation parameters, it shows the relationship of the input and output actually okay dia menggambarkan uh, dia uh, dia akan um, dia uh, penghubung eh, antara input dan output parameters okay how these uh, input and output parameters are related to each other uh, so this is uh, the input and output of the modulator so this is the modulator uh, parameters actually eh. you see that uh, kp kp is defined as uh, delta theta divide with delta v okay so if you have uh, uh, theta 1 you have theta 2 for example and then we have v1 uh, and also we have uh, v2 for example okay so in order to find kp that means theta 2 minus theta 1 divide with uh, v2 minus uh, v1 and the unit is in term of radian per volt. Okay, this is uh, ni, this is the unit. Okay, don't be confused. Eh? This is the unit. Okay. And for Kf, 
okay for the frequency modulator uh, this is for the phase mo uh, the above part is for the phase modulator parameter the below part here is for the frequency modulator parameter so kf uh, frequency devi uh, deviation sensitivity parameter is defined as delta omega divided with delta v so if you have uh, omega 1 parameters omega 1 value uh, in term of radian per second and then you have uh, omega 2 radian per second and then you have a V1 and also V2. So in order to find KF, KF is equal to uh, omega 2 minus omega uh, 1 divide with V2 minus V1. So you get the value in term of radian per second per volt. Okay, seperti dalam sini, the unit. So this also, uh, this kind, uh, uh, this also have been has been asked in the previous final exam, where the student was asked to find the value of uh, KP or KF, given a certain table. Okay, in the previous final exam, uh, the question give you, uh, if I'm not mistaken, here is the omega value, and also the V value. So you have a uh, Okay, you have the x1, x, and you have a value x1, x2, x3. You have here y1, y2, y3. Okay, so when you want to find the uh, kf in this example, uh, you need to subtract uh, two two parameters, eh? uh, two adjacent parameters. Okay, for example, you can choose uh, x1 and x2, and also y1 and y2. Or you can select x2 and x3, y2 and y3. So it uh, will give you the same answer actually. So the kf is actually equal to uh, delta omega divide with uh, delta v. Okay, which is uh, in, in this uh, here is uh, x2 minus x1 divide with y2 minus y1. So you will get the value... Uh, you get a value uh, in term of radian per second per volt uh, and then you can do the rest of the uh, calculations okay so uh, theta uh, this is uh, on the right side here theta t theta t is equal to integral of theta prime t i already mentioned pre in the previous slide so that means uh, integral of kf vmt so since kf is the constant parameter so you can put outside from the integral function so you can do the integral of vmt dt uh, he, this one we will see in the next slide okay dalam slide berikutnya nanti eh so now we already know uh, now we already uh, get the theta t parameter theta t parameter theta prime parameter so therefore we can put inside the general equations okay so you see that the general equations uh, vt okay i suggest to do big bracket eh? so uh, omega ct plus theta t so this is for vpm for v uh, for vfm we need to use a uh, theta prime uh, theta prime t okay untuk vm untuk fm kita menggunakan uh, theta prime t okay so since this is uh, for fm uh, for pm so ini adalah untuk pm equations so for the uh, from the general equation when you want to derive the pm equations you can put inside all the uh, parameter value Okay, so VPMT is equal to VC sine omega CT. So this is, you see that uh, it still remains the same eh, for, from the general equations. The difference is over here. KP, uh, you, you, from theta T. So where, where do we, where do it get the theta T? Theta T is from here. KP VMT. Theta prime T is a KF VMT. Okay. So, uh, here is uh, VC sign in bracket uh, omega CT plus KP VM sign omega MT. 
So uh, phase modulation equation is very straightforward from the general equation. Daripada general equation itu, kita cuma tukar theta t saja kita akan dapat VPMT. So this is the the main equation for the phase modulation. What about FM? Uh, bagaimana pula dengan FM? Okay. So for FM, uh, remember that the general equation is this one. This is the general equations. From here, you can put inside the theta prime t. So since theta t is equal to integral of theta prime t, Okay, so you see that here integral of theta prime t. What is theta prime t? Theta prime t is already defined here in the previous slides. Kf vmt. So therefore, you put inside integral of Kf vmt. Okay, so since uh, uh, vmt is vm sine omega, uh, omega mt, so Kf and peak amplitude vm both of these is a constant value so that's why we can put outside from the integral process kerana kedua-dua ini adalah constant so that's why kita boleh keluarkan daripada uh, integral process so we do the uh, integral of sine integral of sine we will get uh, minus cos over omega m okay over omega m so Integral of sine, you will get minus cos over omega m. So, Kf Vm over omega m. Okay. So, finally, this is the uh, this is the equation for, this is the main equation of frequency modulation. Uh, uh, ini paling susah pun, this integral sign. Itu saja yang paling susah dalam ECS ni eh. Uh, matematik yang paling susah dalam ECS ini adalah integral daripada sin. Uh, itu je lah. Kalau you rasa senang, uh, senang je ni. Uh, so, dia akan jadi mudah. Okay. Uh, so, uh, another example for you. Uh, so, this is now we use a cos. Eh. From the general equation, we use cos and we, you are given a input message in term of cos. Cosine also. Find the equation for PM. So, equation for PM is Vc cos uh, omega ct plus theta t. So, theta t replaced with Kp vmt. So, therefore, you replace with Kp vmt, you get a vm cos. Uh, because you are given this, eh. Ini diberikan dalam soalan. Ini ditukar eh, kalau kita berikan dalam cosine. And for the fm, so this is uh, integral of theta prime t. Okay, so replace theta prime t with kf vmt. Vmt is cosine. So therefore, uh, kf vm integral of cos, you will get positive sine over omega m. So that's why the equation for fm becomes vc cos omega ct plus kf vm over omega m sine omega mt so remember that omega m is equal to 2 pi fm omega uh, om omega c is equal to 2 pi fc okay and later you you will see that uh, kp vm is actually the modulation index of PM, the modulation index of phase modulation beta P. Later also you will see that Kf Vm over omega M is actually refer is actually defined as beta F, the modulation index for frequency modulation. Okay, so I think that's all for today. Okay, that's all for today. Uh, I will continue uh, next week uh, after this eh, with the next process of F FM. Eh, next week dah cuti eh, sorry. So next week is already uh, uh, holiday. Okay, so happy holiday to all of you next week. Uh, after the mid-semester break, I will see you again uh, in online classes eh. 
So sekarang uh, kita boleh ambil attendance Okay pelajar-pelajar boleh open uh, uh, Boleh open you punya QR code Okay you can open your QR code Okay op uh, Sementara itu kalau nak tanya soalan boleh tanya sekarang eh. Siapa yang dah ambil attendance boleh terus keluar eh. No problem Betul, saya tak boleh nak scan Tak boleh nak scan? Eh, saya belum keluarkan lagi ni? Sekejap You tak ada ni ke? Tak, scanner? Tak, saya guna phone Macam mana? Saya guna phone, saya guna phone Oh, guna phone, ok ha, uh, Nama you siapa? Uh, yang tak dapat scan tu nanti bagi tahu saya Nanti saya take kan eh. So siapa yang boleh scan uh, Boleh scan sekarang uh, And then you boleh uh, keluar Pergi ke kelas lain No problem okay. uh, Sementara tu kalau ada yang nak tanya soalan Boleh tanya soalan Thank you doctor Okay Thank you doctor Okay welcome Thank you doctor Okay welcome Thank you doctor Okay um, Ah, uh, doctor, I can't scan my attendance. Okay, uh, boleh tunggu sekejap. Okay, doctor, thank you. Thank you, doctor. Okay, cepat cepat scan scan. Thank you, doctor. Okay, welcome. Eh, hey, tujuh belas orang tak boleh tak. Ah, lima belas. Proceed terus terus. Uh, tadi yang tak dapat scan tadi boleh cuba dulu eh uh, nanti saya akan tikkan untuk you ah uh, doktor ya yeah. sorry saya masuk balik ah <laughs> uh, nak tanya for progress yang report tu oh dia punya format ah uh, nak ada apa je ah uh, uh, yeah so... sorry saya lupa pula nak bagi nanti saya bagi tahu nanti dia punya format uh, hari ni saya akan bagi dia punya format uh, So basically dia uh, uh, Setakat mana yang telah kamu buat uh, Sehingga minggu ke tujuh ni uh -huh. uh, Dan juga minutes of meeting uh, uh, Minutes so of meeting kita orang dah buat Cuma progress tu nak uh, So nak dia, lebih, dia lebih kurang Dia akan ambil uh, sebahagian daripada You punya proposal Maknanya uh, kita dah boleh lihat You punya uh, lakaran daripada Sistem tu macam mana um. Oh, sebab saya tengok yang dekat week 8 tu Daripada MATLAB kan Yang mana? Week 8 Kalau ikut uh, uh, kalau ikut yang doktor punya Week 8 doktor ada tulis Wish view Which is dah ada rang, Dia punya rangka and nilai lah Kalau yang untuk week 7 ni uh, Just progress report and minute meeting tu je doktor tulis uh, yeah, Saya yeah. tengok Itu yang nanti yang, mat, yang MATLAB tu mungkin nanti masuk dalam uh, Progress report yang kedua uh, progress uh. report yang pertama uh, saya Thank tak you, uh, saya tak expect tinggi nanti saya akan berikan dia punya format ah uh, okay. boleh doktor okey okey thank you doktor okey welcome yang lain macam mana dah scan dah asal lambat sangat ni 10 orang ni eh. semua dah cuba scan eh saya tik nama boleh tak doktor saya ah ya 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 tadi yang kamu yang first tadi siapa nama Muhammad Syahrul Mama Syarul, Syarul, ya. ni Syarul Hamizan. Ya, yeah, betul. Okey, tadi siapa lagi? Ah, doktor Muhammad saya Faris Haikal. Siapa? Muhammad Faris Haikal. Faris Haikal. Okey. Dah. Siapa lagi? Mana yang lain? Tan Kawang, Tarmindran Tak ada eh? Uh, doktor, saya dah scan okay. okay, kalau dah scan boleh keluar No problem Thank you doktor uh, Yang lain ni ada tak? Amirul, uh, Brisam, Osman Adan Where's Osman Adan? Haikal Abdul Rais Apa ada? Hello. Semua dah? Eh? 
already finish Elaine that is uh, uh, if there's no no one else I will assume that uh, seven absence ada lagi tak siapa yang dah ambil attendance uh, boleh keluar no problem saya tunggu yang belum settle ya saya tunggu yang belum settle Okay, so Semua dah eh Okay, semua rasa ni dah So, I assume that 7 students are absent eh Saya anggap 7 pelajar absent eh I assume 7 absent because you I think you are not attending the class So, that's all for today Ah, Tinggal 2 orang ya yeah? Okay, so that's all, bye-bye